Welcome to TFP, the Theater Folk Podcast. I am Lindsay Price, resident playwright for Theater Folk. Please, do not lower the safety bar. I will do it for you. Hello. I hope you're well. Thanks for listening. Episode 56, The Ensemble. What I'm going to talk about today is taking back, re repossessing the original meaning of the word ensemble. Wrenching it from that dirty word it's become, especially within high school and middle school plays. And what are some exercises that can make casts divided work together as a whole, as a community, as an ensemble? So the word ensemble has uh, more than one meaning these days. In the theater, the word has come to represent a division. Here are your leads. Here are your less than leads. If you're in the ensemble, sometimes that means you're not good enough. And that is such a damaging stigma. It's one that has a lot of implications in the in the high school and middle school production. If you're 15 years old and you get the ensemble, that can be a heavy weight for some teens to bear. It can it can feel like you're not good enough as a human being, let alone as an actor. And I get that feeling. And I get that you want to be the star. I get that many find their way into the theater because there's a desire to be front and center. You know, they want to be the ones chewing the scenery, in the spotlight, getting the applause. They want the accolades to be the one who says, you love me, you really love me. At the school level, I have seen actors get a script and start counting their lines. I've seen them get into a one-upmanship. I'm better than you because I have more lines than you. I've seen young actors puff up at being the lead and deflate at only being in the ensemble. There's a stigma. There's a difference. The division. But the origin of the word ensemble comes from the exact opposite place. If you look in the dictionary, if you're one of those folks, I am one of those folks. I have uh, dictionary.com on speed dial in a bizarre way. (laughs) But uh, the origin of the word ensemble comes from Latin and through French, for all you spelling bee junkies out there, to mean at the same time. No division, but something together. And because now it's in my head, because I said it, so side tangent, I used to love, I love words, and I used to love watching the spe- the National Spelling Bee. But I really miss the old days when they just, you know, used to put the spelling bee up in the afternoon on a Sunday on PBS or something, very small, very low key, and just the, the kids and the words. And instead of the way they have it now, trying to present all these story packages and making this event all flashy. It's not flashy, it's a spelling bee. It is theater, though. There's so much character and subtext oh, to see these kids, some of them who've never seen the light of day, struggle with the word. And then there's that bell, and you can see the crushing defeat of generations in their eyes, or when they get the word and the smell of victory. Oh, it's an amazing thing to watch as a uh, as an as as an observer of of humankind. Oh, it was so wonderful when it was just the kids and the words. And I don't like twenty fifth uh, annual Putnam County spelling bee. There, I said it. I don't I don't like the songs. I don't like the characters. I think the songs are unmemorable. There, I said that too. Huh. Back on tangent. Ensemble. The word originates with the concept of all at the same time. And adding on to that, 
it has evolved into meaning that takes individual parts and puts them together towards one whole. For example, uh, a unit or group of complementary parts that contribute to a single effect. All the parts of something considered together and in relation to the whole. The general or total effect of something made up of individual, of individual parts. All together, all at once. This notion of all the parts working together towards one whole is what I envision when I think of the word ensemble. That's what I always loved about being a part of a play. Being with a group where we were all in the same boat, you know, going in the same direction. And I would say that, that the type of play that signifies who I am as a playwright is the ensemble play. Not plays that have a couple of shiny parts and, you know, too bad for the rest of you, but plays that depend on every actor working together for the good of the play, for the good of the one. And this attitude, I guess, is how we deal with the stigma of the ensemble being second class. This is how we encourage high school and middle school casts to respond to the word ensemble in a positive manner. From day one, think of the entire group as the ensemble. Call them as such. Emphasize that everyone is working toward one whole. Every actor, everyone involved. That an ensemble is all parts together and only works when every part is cohesive together. Not one side here and one side there. An ensemble is a community. And that is what the cast of a play should be. It's not about me or I. It is about us and we. We belong to a community, the production, the company of players. And to get this... You know, it lies in in the director or the teacher. You know, they got to set the tone to make this happen. And what does that mean? And that means uh, teaching the community to work together from the first rehearsal. Incorporate exercises at every rehearsal that involves the entire cast working together. And that only work if the entire group comes together as one. For example, uh, perfect circle. Have the actors form a perfect circle, right? Give them time to uh, work out all the kinks, then have them break apart and reform that perfect circle without speaking. No verbal communication. They have to find a way to work together to get up to communicate without the obvious speaking and recreate that circle. Manhole cover is a, another great exercise. The group stands in a circle, bends down, and picks up an imaginary manhole cover, manhole cover together and raises it above their heads. But, you know, this is mine. So Everyone has to communicate and keep consistent the shape of the manhole cover, the size of the manhole cover, the weight. Everyone has to work together to make that happen. And again, once they accomplish it, have them repeat the exercise without talking. Here's another one. Cir the uh, group circle jump. As a group, everyone has to jump up at the same time and then land while making as little noise as possible on the landing. And once they get that under their belts, repeat the exercise again without that verbal communication. So these are the kinds of exercises I mean. They, they depend on the group as a whole and only work when the entire group is a cohesive whole. What else? Uh, the group mirror game. So everyone has done the mirror game in pairs, right? So how about in groups of four or eight or 12? Or what if there are four mirror leads across the front? How do they work together? And how do those following work together to create this one massive, um, who's the leader? Who's the follower? Everyone is a community being the mirror together. Uh, practice unison speaking. 
Pick a poem or a tongue twister. You know, why not make it a vocal exercise as well? Unison speaking is very much a listening activity. And that's really important too when you're building a community, right? So it's not just about, you know, me, the actor, only focused on what I have to say and who cares about the rest of you. If you can build a community of listeners, of listening to what someone else is saying or doing, so that if they get into trouble, you know, they can help each other out because they've been listening. They know what's going on. They work together. They help each other out. So with unison, you have to listen to what's going on around you. Listen to the pace of the group instead of just, you know, forging ahead on your own. So these exercises, of course, seem like games, right? They are games, but they're also skill builders. They push your cast to see each other as teammates and that the whole of the game can only succeed if they work together, which hopefully translates to the whole of the production can only succeed if they work together. That is the key to the success of the ensemble community. Now, having said all that is great. It's a lovely... It's fluffy bunnies, it's unicorns, you know. Woohoo! We're we're a community. Yay! <laughs> but what do you do if you you have a play that is set up to exploit that division of here are the leads and here is the ensemble? It happens, right? How do you encourage the ensemble players that they are indeed part of the production community and that they are just as important as the leads? It's easy for uh, ensemble players to fall under the spell of that stigma and just drop out. Stop trying. I firmly believe that the ensemble is just as important as the leads because they help create the world of the play. When I was an actor, briefly, very briefly, (laughs) I was almost always in the quote-unquote ensemble. And funnily enough, I enjoyed it. I was pretty good at it. Uh, I was good at being a part of the atmosphere. Not like wallpaper, a static lamp, or a tree. I enjoyed being a character in the scene, keeping focused on the action, even if I wasn't active in the dialogue, you know, always staying in the world of the play. My uh, favorite part of all time to this day had four words. Yes, yes. Hello. Sorry. Two hours. Four words. And yet, I got a ton of feedback from that part because people saw me. I was a living character in the world of the play, not not wallpaper, not stealing focus, but not moping in the corner because I didn't have more lines or, you know, more to do. And when I'm in the audience, I will find my attention drifting away from the main action to see what those ensemble folks are doing or not doing. I am sometimes amazed at how little actors engage when they're in the background. Just because you're not talking in a scene does not mean you're invisible. If you can see the audience, they can see you, and I am watching you. (laughs) If you're not in the moment, you know, if you're picking your nose or scratching your butt, the audience can see that. If you're not in the world of the play, you're creating a distraction for the audience. And that means they're not in the world of the play. And that is a problem. So I can say till the cows come home. Being in the ensemble is great. But if the actors are entrenched in their belief of the ensemble as a second class, this issue needs to be addressed. So how would you do that? Um, I would have rehearsals just for the ensemble. Don't ignore them. It's easy to do because you may be working on a demanding play that requires a focus on the main action. But if you're, if you want to create a community feeling, the ensemble have to feel like they are part of the experience. 
Uh, for example, making sure that each ensemble character has a name and a background that, uh, that helps the world of the play. Uh, make them think about how they interact with each other in character, of course, while the main action is going on. And this is not about giving them stuff to do that's going to steal focus or upstage the play. But it's all about atmosphere. Encourage the ensemble to realize they are not wallpaper, but they inform the world of the play. They keep the audience in the world of the play. And that is so important. And frankly, you never know what is going to spark the interest of an audience. Time and time again, I have been at a show and some ensemble player has just shone. Not because they're hogging the attention, because they are so in character, they are so part of the atmosphere, they are a delight to watch. You can capture an audience's attention with a walk, with a look, with a, the shrug of a shoulder. What it comes down to is a part is what you make of it. Yes, it can be a bitter, boring ensemble experience. Ugh, I've only got four words, I'm not doing anything. Or it can be an exhilarating time within a within a wonderful life-changing community that you will remember forever. Oh, isn't that nice? I like that. <laughs> so before we go, let's do some theater folk news. <laughs> It is a play feature. What? It's a play feature. It's a play feature. It's time to feature a play with a fantastic ensemble that has a lot to do and won't have time to think about how they're not really uh, the focus, but everyone will love them anyway. <laughs> uh, there's riffing. Not good for me. So I would say that the most uh, uh, that one of my most popular plays in the theater folk canon is Agatha Rex. This is a modern adaptation of the Greek play Antigone by Euripides. Both Agatha and Antigone have to stand up for what they believe in, regardless of the consequences. In the modern version, Agatha is not left with a life or death choice: die or apologize. Uh, but her actions will change her life. She could lose everything she's worked for simply by standing up for a brother who may or not be worth standing up for. And uh, So we're talking about ensemble today. Agatha Rex is a great example of an ensemble that has a lot to do and can't stand around being wallpaper. The Greek, the Greek chorus in the original is transformed into an ensemble of high school students Frankly, it's the toughest part in the play. They set the scene. They set up the world of the play and its characters, like uh, Creon, who is now transformed into from king to principal. Dr. Creon leads our school. He has the right of way. It feels just like an army camp, death before disobey. He's very strict and by the book. He won't sway left or right. You break the rules, you play the fool. You're out without a fight. It's not that we would wish him harm or cause him any pain, but we would feel much better if he was declared insane. The ensemble acts as foils for Agatha, both encouraging her to act and then backing away when she asks for their help. They are the atmosphere. They, they act as the voice of the student body, and they have to do it in unison. What dirty deed's been done? Who's lost before they've won? who fell from the tower in their final hour before the light of sun. That's Agatha Rex. You can read sample pages over at theaterfolk.com and see a ton of pictures from sample productions. Go, read, buy, do it. And lastly, where or where can you find this podcast? We post new episodes every Wednesday at theaterfolk.com and on our Facebook page and Twitter. You can find us on youtube.com slash theaterfolk. You can find us on the Stitcher app and you can subscribe to TFP on iTunes. All you have to do is search on the word theaterfolk. And that is where we're going to end. Now, I will raise the safety bar and a ghost will follow you home. Kindly watch your step, please. Watch your step. Take care, my friends. Take care.